Welcome to Around the Weird. Here's your host, the museum curator of the strange and unusual, Mr. Nothing. Thank you, Mysterious Voice, and welcome back to Around the Weird, a booktube channel where I talk about all the unusual and out-of-the-ordinary literature that I have found in my travels. Today, it is Poetry Thursday, and I wanted to talk about some pretty fun poetry that I have been reading recently. Uh, this one is a recommendation from my friend Bevan, who does not have a booktube channel as of yet. Um, I think this is the second uh, booktube poem or like Poetry Thursday poem that I've talked about from her, the first one being Casey at the Bat. Uh, and this one is about an unusual way of viewing America. I am referring to America by Cloud McKay. For those who don't know, Cloud McKay is a Jamaican uh, writer uh, who um, yeah, wrote poetry, he wrote novels uh, in the 1900s. Uh, he, um, he lived in Jamaica at first, but uh, quickly found that there was no place for him there um, due to racism and the inequality that existed in Jamaica at the time. Uh, so he, he moved to Harlem, as many uh, black uh, individuals did at the time, and found himself in the middle of the Harlem Renaissance, which is pretty cool. Uh, he wrote uh, a number of books. He wrote uh, some poetry, touching upon some of the themes that many black, black individuals were experiencing uh, during that time. Uh, writing about um, America, in particular this poem, uh, the Black experience, and his home country as well. Uh, also writing about Harlem in general. Um, uh, so he was uh, somewhat of a prolific figure in that, in that period. I have been encountering his name quite a bit, uh, sort of like weaving around him because I just didn't know very much about Cloud McKay until Bevan sent me this, uh, this um, poem. So thanks to her for, you know, getting me to learn more about another person like Cloud McKay. Uh, but one criticism of his work is that it's a little bit too um, focused on emotions, internal, internal stuff, than it is on external. So, you know, highlighting the, uh, the, the sort of uh, like internal feelings about racism rather than the actual systemic inequality that existed in the world. And a lot of other black writers didn't really feel that his writing really got it at the true experience. But I think history has vindicated him in some way, even if um, people were critical of his writings at the time. I personally would love to uh, read some of his longer books, uh, given some of the poetry that I found by him recently. But without further ado, let's talk about America by Cloud McKay. I will read the poem and then do a little bit of an analysis and we will move on from there. America. Although she feeds me bread of bitterness and sinks into my throat her tiger's tooth, stealing my breath of life, I will confess I love this cultured hell that tests my youth. Her vigor flows like tides into my blood, giving me strength erect against her hate. Her bigness sweeps my being like a flood, yet, as a rebel fronts a king in state, I stand within her walls with not a shred of terror, malice, not a word of jeer. Darkly I gaze into the days ahead and see her might and granite wonders there, beneath the touch of time's unerring hand, like priceless treasures sinking in the sand. In terms of analysis, there is a little bit to talk about with this poem. You, you can see based on my reading that there that there is a very weird relationship going on between Cloud and America in general. Um, uh, you see it at the very start of the poem. He says, although she feeds me bread of bitterness and sinks into my throat her tiger's tooth, stealing my breath of life, I will confess I love the, this cultured hell that tests my youth. And so immediately in the beginning, you get an understanding that you know, America doesn't treat him fairly. It feeds him bread of bitterness, and it refers to a tiger's tooth that is stealing his life away. Now, if, if that was happening to me, I wouldn't like America at all. But he does say, I will confess I love this cultured hell 
that test my youth. I specifically like the phrase cultured hell because it implies that there's a richness to America, but maybe you can't see it under all the neat, all the horrors that take place, uh, which during, um, during Cloud's time was, you know, lynching, it was police violence, which is still going on. Um, it was segregation, it was Jim Crow. There was just a lot of really awful things happening to Cloud McKay. And like, if that, all that were to go away, you know, there'd be a lot of reasons to love America. But it, it seems like there's, um, there's a lot, a lot, like a lot of suffering going on that makes it very difficult, uh, for him to, to really like America. And I feel like that was a common theme of the Harlem Renaissance writers at the time who wrote that they loved America and they wanted to participate in its many wonders and, and, you know, offer something to this great culture that they were seeing, but they did not have the opportunity because they were prejudiced against. They were facing, you know, federal discrimination, um, statewide discrimination. Even in New York, it like they, you know, might might have been a northern state, but it was still pretty prejudiced against uh, black individuals and really anybody, uh, people of color. You can see that uh, later in the poem too. He says, yet as a rebel fronts a king and state, I stand within her walls with not a shred of terror, malice, not a word of jeer. And so like he, he stands before this, this mighty empire that spews nothing but hatred toward him at times, and he offers none in return. So it's, it's, it's like, I, I love this place. I wish it would love me back. Um, so it's a very sort of like beautiful poem, although it's highlighting how the United States treats people of color at that time. And this continues even to this day. And like, it, it's not exactly 100% better. Um, but what really interested me is the end of this poem. Because at the very end, he says, darkly, I gaze into the days ahead and see her might and granite wonders there, beneath the touch of time's unerring hand like priceless treasures sinking in the sand. And I just gotta say, like, darkly I gaze into the days ahead is a pretty wonderful line. Like, it just flows so great. I just wanted to stress that. Every time I read it, it's so much fun to say. Um, but it's interesting because of how prophetic it speaks. Because he's, he's, he's gazing into the days ahead where... Um, like he sees nothing but the remnants of the American empire. Like they're, they're sinking, it's sinking into the sand, it's in ruins. It reminds me of uh, Percy Shelley's uh, Ozymandias, where he says, uh, where he sees like this, this vast empire, the remnants, the ruins, and uh, the stone that says, look upon my works ye mighty in despair. And that's the same vibe that I'm getting in this poem, where, um, where Claude McKay is saying that he's he sees a prophetic vision into the days ahead, and all that is left is the ruin of the American Empire, where everything that is built up has been destroyed by some unseen force. Was it an enemy? Was it an invasion? Was it uh, because of America's racism that people rose up and fought against their their oppressor? You know that that seems like a good. Um, a good leap because based on what he what else is he is saying in this poem uh but i don't know for 100 percent what it what he's actually getting at there and i it's you know it's too late to ask claude mckay because he's dead but i do think that's an interesting and kind of out of place aspect of this poem where it's like i love this place but also it's gonna perish one day kind of uh, overly dark but uh still somewhat fitting in the in the theme of this poem Anyway, those are my thoughts on America by Claude McKay. I'm going to put a link to it in the description so that you can read it. Let me know what your thoughts are, or you can just tell me what you think of my review in the comments below. I uh, love, would love to hear what you think. Let's have a discussion about Claude McKay and America. Otherwise, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so that more people can find out about this poem and Poetry Thursday. Let's get it going. And otherwise, yeah, you know, um, uh, other than that, I wish you the best of luck in your weird and darkly gazing travels. Farewell.